located in the middle of the Himalayas, Nepal. Is one of the most isolated remote countries in the world but it is changing due to government investing in hydroelectricity attracting foreign powers. Nepal has huge potential for hydropower development. The rough estimate of the potential is more than 80,000 megawatts. However, the installed hydro capacity as of 2020 is less than 2,000 megawatts. Today we are going to talk about hydropower of Nepal. Let's get started but don't forget to subscribe our channel. Nepal's Maximum Potential For the production of hydroelectricity has not yet been met. Nepal to be the biggest natural the battery system of the world where renewable energies, like solar and wind in the entire region, can be used to pump water back to higher elevation dams. The Nepali government is also looking to greater regional interconnection to help balance supply and demand. As a member of the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation SARC, Nepal has access to the region's electricity markets and is looking to expand its power trading agreements with India, as well as other countries such as Bangladesh and China. Interconnections exist along the border with India at various locations. The cross-border Dalkbar Muzaffarpur line is currently operating at the 220 kV level and will be charged at 400 kW once the 400 kV substation at Dalkbar is completed. A second cross-border transmission project, the 400 kV Butwal Gorakhpur line, is also at the advanced stage of preparation, which will expand flow capacity and support large-scale hydropower developments in Nepal with new export routes. It is believed that, due to its hydro potential, Nepal can generate the cheapest electricity in the world. Nepal Electricity Authority NEA, a government entity, owns and operates the national grid. About 60% of the 30 million people living in the country have access to electricity. The rest of the population still relies on primitive methods of lighting, such as kerosene lamps. The supply of electricity, however, relies heavily on imports from India, mainly during the winter when the river flows become very low. Hydropower is an environmentally friendly source of energy with no pollution emitting in air or in land, and it also the most efficient method to all. Thus, traditionally hydropower has been considered environment friendly that it represents a clean and renewable energy source. The expectation has always been that energy security and the economic prosperity of the country will depend highly on hydropower development. In part, the reason for this expectation is the lack of other conventional energy resources in Nepal. Recently, Nepal signed a power trade agreement with India that has enabled the exchange of power across the border. In addition, Nepal signed a power development agreement for the 900 MW Arun 3 and 900 MW Upper Karnali hydro projects with the developers from India. These projects will export power to India, with Nepal benefiting from the royalties and taking possession of the projects in about 25 to 30 years. The direct benefit of these two big projects to the current power shortage in Nepal is minimal. But the hope is that this type of development will attract more foreign investment to the country. Nepal's river has a storage capacity of 202,000 million cubic meter, which includes about 74% amount from three major rivers, Koshi, Gandaki, and Karnali. Geographically, the perennial nature of rivers estimated an annual runoff accounting up to 170 billion cubic meter that flows from the steep gradient and rugged topography and estimated 45,610 megawatts, feasible for hydropower generation which is equivalent to 50% of the total theoretical potential of 83, 290 megawatts. The hydropower system is dominated by run-of-river schemes in Nepal while storage schemes have been benefited to control flood, provide irrigation facility, drinking water supply, navigation, recreation, tourism, aquaculture, and generate revenue. From the beginning, hydropower is used as the natural water cycle based renewable energy, which is a reliable, most mature, and cost-effective technology of power generation. The discharge and river flow depend on the catchment area, rainfall pattern, and the volume of the water estimates the mechanical energy produced by the falling or flowing water called hydropower. Nepal has endowed high potential of renewable water resources, 
possessing about 2.27% of the world's freshwater resources. Most of the rivers flowing from Nepal Himalayas covers 818,500 hectares land area equivalent to 5%, out of the total surface area of the country. In total, Nepal possesses 6,000 rivers including rivulets and tributaries and totaling of about 45,000 kilometers in length and covering an area of 395,000 hectares, 48%, and offering dimensional uses including hydropower development. There are 33 rivers having their drainage areas exceeding 1,000 square kilometers and all the rivers in Nepal comprise the total drainage area of about 194,471 square kilometers and the rest in China and India. The annual average discharge of the Nepalese rivers is about 7,124 cubic meters per second including the total basin area and about 5,479 cubic meters per second excluding the area outside of Nepal. Nepal's huge hydropower potential is due to many perennial rivers, which start from the high Himalayan mountains rising above 8,000 meters in the north, flowing through the mountains toward low-lying plains in the south and continuing on to India. The sources of water for these rivers are snow melt, glaciers and rainfall. On average, Nepal receives 1,500 mm of annual rainfall. The topography, with its high relief and high river flow, provides the potential for abundant hydropower development. The four major river systems, from east to west respectively, are Koshi, Gandaki, Karnali, and Mahakali. In addition, there are several smaller rivers, which originate from the mid-hills. Nepal needs rapid hydropower development to meet its power demand, which is growing 10% every year. However, this growth can be higher once the power is readily available at an affordable price. The bulk of the demand at present is for lighting. In the future, industrial and domestic electricity demand will grow. There is a lack of proper planning for hydropower development. It is highly recommended to make a hydropower master plan covering all four major river basins and to prioritize projects based on different factors, including technical, economic, proximity to the load center, etc. Projects need to be planned based on the rational demand forecast inside the country. By constructing cascade projects, there can be a huge saving in the headworks and in access roads and power evacuation. The government should create a favorable environment by investing in such infrastructure as roads and transmission lines. Roads are not only for hydropower. This will make the hydro projects, including reservoir projects, more attractive to developers. Upper Tamakoshi can be a model project. It is a large daily peaking project, 456 megawatts, that is financed internally, and it generates relatively cheaper energy to the consumers as well. This is proof that such an investment can be accomplished internally. If the government invests in infrastructure, many hydropower sites can be very attractive. The country should invest in data collection and quality control. The large investment depends on the hydrologic data, which is not adequate. The system has over 30% loss in the transmission and distribution system. This should be reduced to at least 15% improvement in substations and the transmission and distribution lines, as well as controlling theft of power, needs to be in effect. Sediment study is usually overlooked. It needs to be properly addressed in any hydropower project to keep the reservoir capacity maintained for the long run and to keep the wear and tear low on the turbine and other hydraulic machinery. Sediment management is a challenge where the rivers carry a huge amount of sediment during the monsoon season which needs to be considered seriously. According to its annual report, the public-owned Nepal Electricity Authority owns 50% of the country's hydropower assets and the other 50% is owned by independent power producers. The 2013 national census showed that about 75% of Nepal's population has access to electricity, of which two-thirds have access to grid connections, and one-third rely on small, rural, off-grid systems. While off-grid systems provide relatively reliable electricity supply in rural areas, grid connections in both rural and urban areas do not guarantee electricity due to the supply shortage. As a result, load shedding can reach up to 18 hours per day during the dry season. 
but all of these is changing and load shedding at present is barely noticed due to a high level of management. The multi-purpose use of water as fresh water, agricultural, industrial, household, recreational, and environmental and power generation, Nepal's water demand is increasing day by day. Nepal has built several dams for hydroelectricity and irrigation purposes. The human influence with population growth, affluence increase, business activity expansion, and rapid urbanization persuade climate change issue seriously resulting depletion of aquifers and health effects with increasing water pollution. The country's fragile environment consisting rugged topography, monsoon climate, juvenile geology results in higher rates of runoff, erosion, landslide, sedimentation, and flooding. The climate change problems and issues are related to the resource impacts concerning the geographical and ecological characteristic of the country. The water resource impact evaluation is challenging toward water availability, quality and stream flow, and sensitive to changes in temperature and precipitation. According to the inflow of precipitation in the basin depends on the upstream rainfall and snowfall and affects river regimes and different environmental factors at various time scales like seasonal, monthly, daily, and hourly. Similarly, large-scale hydropower projects may have greater economic and environmental implications. However, the impacts on specific ecosystem of each hydropower depend on the size and flow rate of the river or tributary, climatic, and habitat conditions, type, size, design, and operation of the project, and nature of cumulative impacts that occur upstream or downstream of the river. Thanks for watching. Do like to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for more video like these.